Hello everybody, this is The Purge, bringing you guys a first person replay commentary. I played this game yesterday, I did not stream it, but I played against Marilini and I was playing with DK. So it was pretty fun. Um, this is one of the games, sorry if this makes a lot of noise. We had the maids come today and they moved a bunch of my stuff, which is fine because I cleaned the whole house. It is like, maids are the best. I haven't seen my toilet that white in forever. Diet I was like, wow, it's naturally that color? I had, I had no idea. Anyways. Playing against Merlini, uh, we played a we had a pretty high level stack here. Um, DK is definitely better than me. Salen is probably better than me as well. Yeah, he's, he's definitely better than me. And I don't know about these other two guys, but we basically had a really good stack going, and we ended up queuing three times in a row, and we got Merlini's game every time. That's because our MMR was high enough where they just kind of ended up against each other. Um, this is actually Captain's draft going on here, as you guys can see. They haven't quite fixed the overlay system. It it still looks like a Captain's draft, but at least it fixed the band stuff. Um, anyway. Anyways, it was a captain's draft, played against Merlini three games. Um, we went about even on win-loss, um, so that should not tell you at all what happens this game. But we played three games. Okay. I wish this part was faster, so I'm going to speed it up. Anyways, I'm playing Jakura this game, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Eight times. Okay, eight times is maybe a little too fast. We'll put it on two times for now, and then we can reduce it in a second. Uh, we have a bounty hunter. I don't know why that was first picked. I don't think I paid attention to the drafting at all. But we got a beast master as well. I would argue their heroes are legit, but I'm not entirely sure. Damn, they got an initiator. Pusher. I agree with this. Disabler. Hey, is it an okay nuker? I actually think these are these are okay. Disabler. Escape. Radiant team pick. Hard carry. These, some of these are actually looking pretty darn accurate, I must say. Nuker. What is this? Oh no, my mouse is moving so I can't see anymore. I don't know what these are. Some of these, they had just have icons that don't work. But I'm okay with it. Alright, we PL'd them. That's what we're doing. Okay, so I'm playing support secure this game. I think I've made a Jakiro support video semi-recently. It was also kind of a scrim. So maybe you guys won't learn a whole ton this game. But it was a solid-ass game. And I think there's a lot of really good things that we can learn from it. Any game that's close is, is going to provide like some really good knowledge points. So our lane should be an offlane bounty hunter. We'll have a mid beast master and then a Rubik Jakiro supporting a Phantom Lancer. If we hop on over to what I'm doing here. Alright, first things first. As always, one support should buy the Courier as well as the Observer Wards. The other support should buy Sentries, and most likely a Smoke, which should give you gank options in the early game. So this game I'm doing the Sentry Smoke option, then I'm going to buy some regen, and I have enough gold left over for one item, and I think I decided on a Clarity Potion. The reason I bought a Clarity Potion is because Jakiro's base strength is really high at 24, and strength gain is actually quite good at 2.3, so Jakiro is pretty farm independent in terms of, oh yeah, I should probably close that, huh? It's pretty farm independent in terms of um, needing HP items, so you can usually just focus on like mana regen or utility stuff. It's usually pretty fine. So I bought a Clarity Potion. I didn't really feel like I needed an Ironwood Branch. Um, also, Dual Breath is pretty mana expensive. Uh, it's 170 at level 4, which slightly offsets the fact that all of his stats are really good. So, this should help compensate that a seconds, bit. Sorry, I'm yawning. I woke up this morning. And I felt like it was way later than I thought it was. So And so I'd like wake up and I'd be like, oh man, I've been sleeping for so long. I should really wake up. And then I was like, but I feel so tired right now. So then I would go back to sleep or try to. And then I kept like doing that about eight times. It was very frustrating. The reality was I still got out of bed at the normal time. I just for some reason thought that it was really early when it was not. So I am not feeling the most rested the today, begins. which is it's, uh, whatever. So they are doing an offlane puck here. We have a illusion rune over here. I was really hoping to pick this up, but I was a bit late on this. This looked really bad. Luckily, the cast doesn't have anything to bounce to, but... Um, and he also used his orb already, so it wasn't too bad that this is the case. So I'm gonna possibly grab... Yep. I decided to pick up Ice Path, because I figured we would be able to hit the puck for sure. I feel like he maybe should have lanced right there. I feel like that was a mistake, personally. He's actually trying to trade with me, but I don't think this is a good choice for him. I think we should have been able to get that kill, honestly. I really do. Um, I think he should have lanced as soon as the puck got frost or uh, ice path. And then the Rubik should have shifted over and possibly lifted him as well. I mean, stopping his orb is going to be almost impossible unless the Rubik would have moved right into the jungle immediately. But I, I don't, I also don't think that that should have happened. I think we should have killed him. 
So, my pull's a little late. That sucks. I had to burn a self for all the damage that we took in that fight. But, it's not too bad. Normally, I really don't like getting Ice Path at level 1. I actually think Dual Breath is much better because it gives 70 damage. Um, more than 70 damage. It does about 105 damage for a level 1 new. It was also at this point where I realized it was my mistake to go harass. Um, the, the Rubik should have shifted over and started the pull. But instead, we both basically came over to pull or harass and then all of a sudden we can't pull. So... Um, our pull timings got like really messed up this game. We should have been pulling a lot more reliably and we should be able to do some good damage to Puck right here. And you are about to see the best ice path that's ever existed. And there it is. Isn't that beautiful? We definitely would have killed that guy if my ice path actually landed. That was I was really mad about that one. So that sucked. And we're going to again miss the pull because then we did a bunch of damage again and then now I'm not, not going to get there in time. This just sucked. So I was like, well, okay, well, we lost our timing again. I guess I'll come back and maybe we'll try to kill the Puck. He is a bit low on HP, so getting a kill on him is definitely a possibility, but... And I am just gonna nuke him. Luckily, my ice path did end up hitting, so... Uh, he had no mana there, by the way. I, I forgot to point that out. I, I communicated that to them when I checked, and that's why he didn't actually orb, because he, he didn't have any mana. He only had, like, 30 mana, because he'd orbed so many times already. And we're gonna miss the pull again. <laughs> Luckily, those creeps are pretty fast. I feel like I maybe got one of them. Okay, I got the range creep to come. So, one more range creep denied. Not very good. It will push the lane back at least, but... Oh, I'm sorry. It did actually de-aggro. Well, that sucks. Alright, I'm committing to the pull now. This is going to be all great. We could actually do a smoke gank on the mid lane. That really wouldn't be too bad. Um, you can do some fancy things with the dual lane, especially on a Rasta. And that's one of the main reasons Rasta isn't played very much mid. Or Shadow Shaman is his Dota 2 name. Um... It's because he's pretty squishy. Uh, he's a great mid hero. He really honestly is. In a 1v1 matchup, he's very strong. Um, just because his ability to farm is very good, he can also harass in the meantime. All around works out nicely. So I might be a little late on this. Yeah, I shouldn't have attacked that creep. Oh, he's a little greedy on my pulls. So I lost the range creep, but that's not too bad. Still got three melees. Um... Yeah, you can easily smoke gank Ross in the mid lane. Luckily for us, the Rubik was able to do it by himself, and he got the courier kill. So this puts us in a really good spot. Puck can't really come to lane very easily, especially now that we're pulling. So all around the game is, is evening out nicely. And we can pull up CS totals if you guys are curious. So looks like our carries are about the same. Um, the main reason PL's a bit behind is, number one, he's gotten a kill, I believe. And number two... Uh, we also he also came towards the puck in the jungle there at the first wave, so I'm sure he didn't have opportunity for exp or a couple last hits there. So that hurt things. Um, in terms of Jakiro's skill build that I can talk about while we're paused, I have no idea where bounty where bounty did this. It did not make any sense to me at all. He played really well the game before this, but um, I don't know. He he did not have a very good game, and it confused me a lot. Uh, skill build for Jakiro, I always like maxing Dual Breath over Ice Path. The main reason I do this now is because, again, Dual Breath is reliable. Ice Path does very, very little damage per level. It gives you 25 damage per level, which is not very good. Stun Duration does go up, which is useful, but largely I don't I don't think it's uh, useful. We had another pause here. I think DK was still AFK or lagging or something. They're going to lose... Uh, yeah, the Witch Doctor on the top lane is going to die. So Bunny was able to get back in lane pretty fast. But yeah, I really like maxing Dual Breath and Ice Path. If I don't get a fast Arcane Boots, I will usually completely skip my ulti until later, like 9. Um, his ulti, uh, Jakiro's ulti is kind of useful. It's not amazing, but it's it's semi-useful. I'm going to pull again here. It's semi-useful, but it's not something that you want to pick up at 6, almost always, because there's just not really a lot of good combos with it. Unless you're up against, like, a, I don't know, like a Faces Void or something. I tried way too hard to, to pull the creeps together here, attack. and... Um, Rather than running to the front of the creep wave and trying to block it, I should have uh, drawn the attack of the creep into the creep wave. That would have worked better. So that was another pulling mistake that I made. I messed up a lot on pulling here. It's like, I always like... I don't know, this is another example. I want to get this kill on Merlini because he's definitely a kill Daya's possibility since he's a Shadow Shaman. So we just got to wait for the next nuke and then I can go Ice Path him. And unfortunately my dual breath was just like a fraction too short there. I was also very frustrated about that loss of a kill. If my dual breath would have hit, he would have died 100%. So I would have done like 140 plus 40. So I would have done 180 magic damage. He would have had a slow on him, and the PL could have followed up on the right click. So I just slightly underestimated the range there. And I did have to target the ground. I wouldn't have been able to get within range if I didn't target the ground there. If I like tried to target him directly, I don't think I would have gotten him. But 
I kind of wish he would have went aggressive there, maybe. Um, there was a creep wave, but I feel like we maybe could have gotten the kill. I don't know what hero at what level he is. If he's 6, it's maybe a little risky. He actually wasn't 6. I think we should have killed him right there, honestly. I don't think he could have stopped us from a dual breath and an ice path. I think we 100% could have killed him. So We definitely could have had like a much better early game. That's for sure. Lots of mistakes were made. Little things like that you'll get better at just by playing more and more, though. So, it sucks they happen, but... We had war we had vision of the Shadow Shaman for God's sake. Like why would he try that? It made so little sense to me. I guess he tunnel visioned on the, the witch doctor kill or something, I don't know. Usually you can't go for the second last state, you're gonna have to wait in almost all circumstances. Radiance middle tower pull through there was perfect. Attack. Happy about that one. It's gonna steal the haste rune. I have to make sure to hit the big centaur just in case. I've had that happen a couple times where the small creep will, will get de aggroed basically. Causes some issues. And we got to kill an inspector. Now the game's going really well for us, honestly. It's a really good start. I'm going to be able to get a centaur as well. Actually, if I was really good, I would have pulled the wildkins over here. That was a mistake. I should have pulled the wildkins over to that creep wave because then I would have denied the extra two creeps and I maybe would have been able to get the wild cam camp as well. Or at least killed the small one. So, I should have done that. I also missed the centaur last hit, which is like 70 gold, but... I will uh, I will be able to survive. Looks like, oh well, Rasta actually did a stack on the Ancients and, and dropped wards to get, this, get his farm up. Not a bad choice. It's not very vulnerable to dying that way either, so... It's probably a pretty good way to get like 500 gold. So, I've got a magic stick now. I've got regular boots. We should be able to push this tower down. I have two levels of dual breath, which I will use on the creep wave. Whenever you're trying to push a tower, it's not bad to waste a little mana. He got the last hit still, which is great. We have a big creep wave. And he's also going to send his illusion forward to, to scout out to see where the next creep wave is and see if any heroes are coming, which is really smart to do. If the creep wave comes, he can draw it away. If it's a hero, we can react accordingly. But we will be able to get this tower. So we take our tower, this opens up our map a bit more, and at this point now, PL basically doesn't need any any guarding, because the wave is going to push heavily no matter what. So I might as well go to the top lane now, which is why I'm now TPing. So I'm just checking for my range on uh, Ice Path. I was spotted by the Nature's Prophet ulti, so I dropped the sentry so we could deward that. Kind of went all in on this Witch Doctor a little bit, but my Dual Wrath was able to hit him. We ended up losing three for two. Not really worth it, but we killed what well, we killed their mid and we killed their support. Could have been a bit better. I think I went a little too ham on the the witch doctor. I saw him kind of out of position, and then I overextended myself to go for him. And I should have just backed up probably and reacted based on what was happening rather than going all in myself. So maybe not so much worth it. Um, I decided to work towards a mech immediately rather than grabbing an arcane boots first because I had almost arcane, but I'd rather just finish the mech as fast as possible. Again, Jakiro's int gain is good enough where you can actually be able to make uh, to use a mech while also casting your spells. So, grab a buckler. Um, that would give me more survivability. Again, we killed the Spectre. Really good start to us. Our PL, our PL hasn't died yet as far as I'm aware. Our EXP permit is really high on... Yeah, we're definitely in pretty firm control of the game right now. The downside is that they do have an AFK Nature's Prophet, which means that he is going to be not so useful in the early game, but he will be really strong um, once his Midas and second items start kicking in. So, Can we give some bonus armor to my creeps here? Looks like they're pushing bottom as well. So yeah, the skill build I like doing on Jakiro is just max dual breath and max ice path. I do it evenly. I do dual breath and then I do ice path and I do dual breath. We're def we were talking about defending this tower and we were unsure if we should do it or not, but I don't want to go first because those heroes could easily blow me up. So I was just kind of sitting here waiting. And once that TP started, I decided to go. This is a pretty good initiation for us, I think. So far, great. Unfortunately, I missed him with the, the ice path. I was a little off here, but he's actually trapped in there. Don't know why I put the sentry down. But I did know Puck was in there for sure. 
I RPO was denying the tower and killing wards right now. I was that's why I was really confused. See, I basically knew that we had the hero advantage, and I was really confused why we weren't killing the puck. Pretty much, I was just running at this point for exp. So I knew that he was going to get the kill, and he got him, so I got, I actually got 221 gold just by standing near that, which is pretty crazy. Um, it's pretty amazing how much gold I got there, but I can run back to base now. Yeah, it kind of confused me, but what the PL did, uh, which I didn't realize at the time, he stayed behind because the Plague Wards, or the, uh, the Serpent Wards were all still alive, and they were all still wailing on the tower. So instead of coming to go for the kills, he instead killed the Serpent Wards, which guaranteed that he could get the deny later. So it did result in our Rubik getting blown up. But we still were able to kill the Nature's Prophet, and we denied the tower. Um, probably worth it, but it's hard to say. I, I, I think we could have killed the Puck as well, if he was actually there. Um, maybe not, but he might. He probably maybe we maybe could have killed the Puck as well. So, would trading a hero kill for a deny be worth it? It's hard to say. It would have given us more EXP. It would have hurt Puck pretty severely. And um, but all of their heroes as a whole would have gotten more gold. I'm not quite sure what the right choice is. I think denying is. I think his choice is probably right though. So we are going for a mech next. We by the way we also got the Rasta, so we still got two hero kills and a deny out of it for one support. So that's it was a big win there. We had a really good early game, um, except for I mean we could have gotten more kills in my lane because of mistakes from me and stuff like that, but still went okay. So DD has been stolen. Um, the PL went for a Fast of Lads build, and I want to talk about PL a bit, because I am not completely sold on this at all. In fact, um, Vlad's PL is by far one of the most common noob item builds in the game. Um, we can talk about this after the fight, I guess. Was able to land my Ice Path, but didn't really have an opportunity for follow-up. I'll, I'll talk about PL in a bit when there's more downtime. I seem to remember that there's a fight about to start. DK is really highly level though, he's level 11 already. At this point, Jakir is actually a huge threat as a support, honestly. I, I have a lot of utility, I can do a lot of things with it. Fortunately, my Ice Path whiffed everybody. So far, a really bad fight for us. If you're ever being really closely chased, just Ice Path in front of you and run through it, and he'll have to run into it if he's a melee hero. And now I just kind of want to juke. He's going to throw a dagger to look for me and he's not going to find me. So I was able to get out. Um, I didn't anticipate the team fight well enough there. Usually whenever you get initiated on like that, you throw the ice path, ice path in a place where they're going to be running through. And hopefully catch some of them. Um, the issue was that Witch Doctor just dropped his ulti and he just crapped on everybody. And the only way we were going to stop the Witch Doctor ulti was me ice pathing him. So I didn't anticipate that basically, which is what I should have done. And in fact, that happened a couple times in the team fights where I should have just saved the ice path in anticipation of the Witch Doctor ulti. Because when his ulti went down, it just like ruined us in team fights. So maybe I, like looking back on it, I should have saved, I should have saved my, uh, my ice path. So it was a little unfortunate. Okay. Reasons that I dislike Vlad's on PL. It gives nothing to the illusions. Zero. Zero. Nothing to the illusions. All it gives you is more mana per second. It gives you armor. It gives you lifesteal. And it gives you HP regen over time. The reason he's building it, which I, I, I don't like say it's... I'm not like laughing at the guy for building the item. It's a problem that... And that is one of the solutions, essentially. The, the problem is that, unfortunately, um, PO can't get Tranquil Boots anymore. And Tranquil Boots were the perfect, the absolute perfect solution to the previous problem, which was PO needs HP regen of some sort. Um, you needed HP regen. Losing us, uh, by the way, us losing two heroes here was pretty huge. These two heroes lost, and the two heroes in the mid finally evened up the, the team fight, and probably, yeah, it basically put us from a really big advantage to being dead even. So those small mistakes in a game that's this close are really, really impactful. But I have my mech finished, which is really good, so now we have a lot better way, ways of team fighting. So basically, people are now, instead of being able to grab Tranquil Boots for like... 500 gold they say i need an hp regen item i need some way to be able to keep my hp up so that i can team fight and to be able to team fight uh team fight and stay alive and jungle and all that stuff so people are currently exploring the best way to do that and some people think the best way is vlad's i don't think so because the item is 2000 gold it gives you no hp and it does nothing for your illusions i think you're better off getting a vanguard easily than uh than a vlad's personally because vanguard gives you like 300 hp approximately there's just a lot much a lot better stuff going on there I think my ice path could have been better again. I'm gonna mech finally here. So 
like we're gonna be able to yeah we got the specter pretty easily so nice tp out by the witch doctor those are our wards actually um we lost the bounty hunter in that fight i probably should have mech for the bounty hunter but I didn't think about the mech until everybody Radiant's else was a bit lower, so... Alright, so there's his item build that he's doing right now. He has Treads, he has a Vlad's, and he has a Yasha. So, two of those items are not that weird. Yasha and Treads is pretty normal. They'll increase his farm by a good amount. But I, I just... I'm honestly just not a huge fan of the uh, the Vlad's. I think you should... I Think about it more. I think what you should do is you should either grab a Mask of Death and just leave it at a Mask of Death. Or you should grab... That was pretty funny. <laughs> I think you should either grab a Mask of Death and leave it in a Mask of Death, or you should grab a Ring of Health, or you should grab a, a Vanguard. Nice, we're gonna get a double kill out of this. It was a little unnecessary for me to kill steal that. Um, I mostly was like, oh, maybe he'll TP, but like, we had a track on him, so there was no chance. It was just a small mistake for me. Whatever, I got another kill. I really didn't do that with the intent of kill steal. And if I was gonna kill steal, I would have dual breathed it. Fact. Using uh, Ice Path was just to try to guarantee that they weren't going to be able to escape from this. So, oh, that sucked. So I basically placed a ward right in their vision. They dewarded quite a bit this game, so I had to adjust my my um, my placements a bit, which you'll see me do soon. See, so yeah, I'm level 9 now. I picked out Macro Pyre. Gives me a lot of burning damage. Um, I'll basically use this whenever I land a successful Ice Path on at least two heroes, is, is usually how I play with Macro Pyre. We don't really have a lot of combos with it. We have Beastmaster Roar, which is the main one, but that's about it. Um, usually you'll see Jakiro used... The, the best combos with Jakiro with other heroes are Clockwork. When he cogs somebody in, you can just macro pyre in that and you get full damage. Which I believe is like, what, 5 seconds? Uh, lasts for 7 seconds. So much damage. It lasts for a huge damage output for a uh, pretty large duration. Chronosphere is another great one, where heroes are um, disabled. Naga Siren is another great one. So like Naga Siren... Darkseer, heroes like that are really good combos. Uh, surprisingly, I, I guess his sentry, I was really confused here, because I, I sentried it, I assumed that he had a ward there as well, or at least I'd get their sentry, but my sentry was wasted. Um, but I decided to go deward and stuff, I knew they had a ward uh, over there as well, I was very disappointed to see that got dewarded immediately, so I think I bought new wards with the courier, which is what I'm doing, now I'm transferring, there it is. So, new observer wards, I've got a sentry as well. That is a track shadow shaman that is not real. My teammates are kind of pushing Dyer's mid right now, but I'm not there. I probably should have been here, honestly. I got the sentry killed, and now I'm going to shift over to try to show up. I was able to stop the, the Wish Shock Dolty, and I'm still trying to show up to the team fight. But at this point, I was late. So, this is pretty sad for me. Um, that was a pretty big mistake. I should have been pushing with my allies instead of dewarding, was number one. If I would have been there, we maybe could have won that team fight rather than... I mean, I really wanted to deward, obviously, but... Um, that was basically like a three-man push mid to, like, fight before the team fight. I mean, you, I could also blame my allies for starting a fight there with only three. Like, we knew our PL wasn't there, so it was a little weird. Kind of a weird action. But I probably... I definitely should have shown up rather than going to deward first. I don't know. Me getting wards up helps up our PL a lot, but... I told them that there was still a ward there, so... Or that I didn't get a chance to check to see if there was a ward there. But they got a Roshan out of that, so that's a pretty big loss for us. If we look at the gold graph as a result as well. So they're now going to probably jump into a moderate gold advantage and a quite a huge EXP advantage. They've gotten quite a few kills. We also have a bounty hunter, so like getting kills is really good for us, but we haven't really been breaking to advantage uh, advantageous. Our bounty hunter's 2, 6, and 3 right now. He's died a lot. He has very little... So, I was not very happy about his farm progression in this game. Okay. So, I know they're dewarding a lot, so I need to adjust my warding as such. If you start putting wards in weird places, if they don't buy a gem, they're not going to find them, basically. So, this is like... Not... This is this is basically like advanced pub warding, which is what I'm going to teach you guys right now. You just got to put them, put them in weird-ass spaces that aren't as good, but still provide you some stuff. Like, I'm never going to ward... I, I, you can't see where I'm pointing my finger, but I'm not gonna re—I'm not gonna ward the spot ever again, basically, for this game. It's not worth it because they're probably—they're always gonna put a sentry there. It's a very, very standard spot. So I need to start putting observer wards in weird spots that nobody is gonna expect. Like here, who's gonna deward this spot? This spot is maybe a little anticipated occasionally, but I just want to make the map semi-safe for the PL. So I'm gonna put in wards in weird spaces that are gonna make sure that the uh, the river is, or at least the jungle is semi-uncovered. He's actually getting ganked right now, unfortunately he's going to end up dying to the puck in the wards, so 
was a big loss for us as well. He maybe shouldn't have been that aggressive. Like, our whole jungle is open, for example. If we look at his items again, he's going to go... Uh, he has his Diffusal Blade finish, he'll make Manta next, and that'll actually make him pretty good at fighting. His HP is still quite low, though. So, and that's as a result of... Um, I should probably be with my team again. I put the wards down. They're all ganking and stuff. I should be with them, I think. I spent too much time away from my team this game. I think that's definitely true. For some reason, we have a courier flying through there. So I'll just take some gold and EXP for now, I guess. But if, if we really want to do like a 4 protect 1 strategy, which is kind of what we're semi-badly executing, we need the 4 to be roaming together and getting kills. And the 4 that we have are actually really good at getting kills. Um, yeah, Beastmaster, Rubik, myself, and a, and a Bounty Hunter. So, And this is what we're going to start trying now. We should have also smoked the Hawk rather than just uh, the Heroes. Because seeing the Hawk come into the jungle means that we're looking for ganks, especially if it's somewhere completely random. So, And then we found a random Puck. This is really weird. I was actually able to catch them. I'm going to macro power on this. Fortunately, I wasn't getting the uh, Spectre here. We definitely need to escape at this point, though, I think. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I was about to retreat, and then I decided that I wanted an arcane boost. Then I realized that there's a chance that they're coming for me. Did you guys hear that? Did you hear that? That's the sound of me crapping my pants. Because the cask was going to hit me. There it is. Got me. I almost died. I really almost died. <laughs> I was really greedy to go back for the arcanes. Like, we just had an engagement, we escaped, and then I almost died. Huh. Okay. And I've got pretty much unlimited mana. The game is still pretty close in terms of hero farm. Our PL still is the most farm, but um, it's kind of scary because Nature's Prophet is like right behind him. That tower is going to die for free, which is too bad. Bounty was way too far up, but he's going to be okay. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. He tried to disable some TPs here. They basically all responded to the counter push, which was going on in the bot lane. Which we've now defended. Uh, Liquid Fire is definitely Jakiro's least good skill. Um, I think it's a very useful skill, but it's not something that is uh, worth leveling over Dual Breath and Ice Pass. So never get it early. Um, unless you're doing like... It's not even worth it for push strats. Like the cooldown is so big at level 1. You have to activate it manually, by the way, now. Um, I think it's Q for me. It's probably E for you guys, but it's it's very nice that you can activate it manually, in my opinion. Um, it can kind of mess up your attacking sometimes, but you get to choose exactly what it goes on, and you never use it mistakenly anymore. You don't, like, cast it on a bunch of creeps because you want a last hit, for example. It's a lot better now. Again, I use Macro Pyre like how I said I would. Um, you wait till you hit somebody with the Ice Path, and you throw Macro Pyre on top, preferably on two heroes. It is actually pretty big damage output, so... Definitely nice to have. Uh, my PL almost has a Manta. Once he gets Manta, he can very easily solo kill a lot of their heroes. Um, Spectre is pretty evasive, but and Puck is as well, but he should be able to kill a lot of the other guys if he really wants to. Um, I can spend this time getting wards up. Our ward vision, again, is it's okay, but it is it does have to be shitty because of the placement. And we can look at overall items as well in case you guys have missed things. There's a Vanguard and a Radiance on Spectre. This is a really old-school build, but it's very common now that Tranquil Boots is not... Uh, like 100% solution to HP regen. Everybody has to adjust their build slightly and it makes everything a little confusing right now. So, Nature's Prophet has gone for a Necro 3 mech build, which is very good for supporting supporting his allies, and as well very good for pushing. And the Necro 3 is also great because it spots out the PL. It's like a gem, basically. So, I'm going to go put a ward on a high ground. Again, going to put it somewhere that's a little less obvious. Most importantly, I went over there before I placed because I, I wanted to make sure that if there was a ward in this area that spotted me going this way and was going to see me coming back with one ward, I didn't want them to realize, essentially, that I was going to have anything good. We're going to have a Rubik getting killed over here, but I don't think we lose anybody else. I kind of wanted to fight this, but we did just lose our hero, so probably not worth it. It's like Beastmaster working on taking the bot lane. And uh, I didn't know where he was TPing, but I wanted to stop him no matter what. So I did. I interrupted his TP. It looked like it was actually going right on the Beastmaster. So I may have actually saved Beastmaster. And there we go. He's going to end up surviving with another blink. I possibly saved his life looking at the replay. I didn't know what I was doing. 
while I was playing it. I was like, I'm gonna stun this guy that's trying to go somewhere. Might as well. Middle tower is under attack. I bought more smoke because I like holding it and never using it. And now it looks like they're pushing. I think this is a fight that we kind of have to take at this point because we're losing a ton of map control. They're getting a tower advantage now. And we honestly have pretty good items. We really have honestly good items. He's actually going to have Manta style. So if he has Manta and Diffusal, I think we can fight this. I have to sit really far back because I have to worry about Puck initiating um, as well as other disables like Rasta, for example. So we have to be pretty... This is honestly a safe place to, to stand when they're preparing to push the tower. And from here, our goals are basically just stop the push. And to do this, I'm just going to dual breath a lot of AoE damage and I have to look for opportunities to ice path um, we do actually have an initiator it's basically Beastmaster but I can also substitute initiate as well those casks were very very frustrating I was able to grab two heroes I actually really wanted to go in on that I was sad that we didn't have follow up honestly I used my mech because everybody was a bit low. Oh, that was actually the real one. My ice path whiffed everybody. And I'm whiffing so many ice paths. So I basically got five kills for nothing there. Um, I honestly think my initiation was good. Reviewing the replay just now, I think my initiation was fine. We could have gone on that. I dual breath, I ultied. Marilini almost died. He had like 200 HP. Nobody threw anything. Nothing. There was literally nothing. I don't know if they were on cooldown or what, but I initiated and we should have killed them. Like, we lost our burst opportunity basically. I used all my burst and nobody else threw anything else and we didn't get any kills and they were able to mech through it and live. And then they were full HP and then we fought a fight and we ended up dying. Um, I obviously missed a lot of ice paths, but it's hard to line that skill. Most of the time I'm pretty good with it, but I did miss quite a few in these fights. I should have probably, I kept like throwing it in an area rather than like targeting a guy, which I maybe should have been more about targeting than, than zoning. I always would throw zoning AOE stuns. So we lost Rax, and we lost five heroes to nothing in that team fight. And that should never really happen. You should never lose five heroes for nothing in a team fight. If you do, you like really messed it up or something, or they played it really well, which is what the case was. They played that fight really well. Sucks they got a full heal out of it too, though. Witch Doctor is very good for that reason. So we really needed that team fight to go better. If we could have just won it and still lost the uh, lost the tower, that would have been great. But we just kind of got crapped on. Nothing really happened. Looks like we are gonna get really neat though. Maybe. Caught it. All right, I did disable him this time though. And then we responded with a 5 for nothing team fight. It's like, seriously, crazy game. Um, so, important things I did that fight. Ice Path, the Witch Doctor ulti when it came out. And then I mech'd the Rubik right before he died, which kept his ulti up. And then the Beastmaster Axis came through and finished off Puck. So, we were able to 5 for nothing them right back. The downside is we're not going to be able to get a Rax for it. Uh, because our positioning in terms of Rax potential is not nearly as good. But we've got another mech soon. We should be able to take this tower at least. So, we can take some advantage of our huge team fight win. Very close game, though. We're going to try to take Roshan as well. Oh, wow, they're actually scouting this with their uh, courier. Little did they know. So this is basically our gamble. We we decided to take the tier 2 mid, and we said, let's try to also take Roshan before we leave. Um, yeah, they, they can't actually defend this. Oh, they, they do actually have a lot of global heroes, and they're TPing for it. There's Puck, we got the Aegis, and we are out. I put a ward down as we're leaving. We should be able to get out. They're, yeah, they're not going to be able to stop us, so... That's pretty good for us. We got a 5 for O, we took a tier 2, and we took Roshan. I have 2,700 gold, which is ridiculous, and I was like, okay, what do I buy? Um, the options that were going through my head... Um, my shop is an opening, but... It's basically 4 staff, uh, Yules, or a Veil. Those are, that was what I was thinking about, basically. I said, which, which of those 3 did I want? 
Uh, Yules would have been kind of nice this game because I could have used it to Cyclone the Witch Doctor as he's ulting. It's a lot more reliable. And for example, if I Ice Path three heroes and then he drops his ult, then we don't have very many stuns. And that's one thing that the Witch Doctor did a really good job of exploiting this game. So if I throw my Ice Path, and then I'm also able to Yules him after he drops his ulti, then I actually have a way to deal with it. But instead I said, whatever, I'm buying a Veil, because I wanted to get a Veil. Um, I think this is maybe a mistake, because we actually don't have very much magic damage on our team. And actually, the Veil does very little to increase the nukes of our team. It slightly increases the Beastmaster Axis, it increases the Fade Bolt that the uh, Rubik does, and increases the Lance damage that um, PL throws. And the Shuriken for the bounty hunter but largely we have very very little magic aoe so i think grabbing the veil was probably a mistake it drastically increases my damage but i'm a very small component of the whole team so i think it was a mistake to grab this i i don't know if a four staff would have been better i think while i played the game i didn't really notice a lot of opportunities where i could use to four staff but um, i'll keep an eye out for that while i play this game it was definitely more of an impulse buyer was like hell yeah i want to get a veil rather than it was like this is the right choice I think if I was playing smart, I think I would have grabbed the Yules, actually. I think Yules might have been smarter. It does actually give me a lot of survivability increase, though. It does give me 5 armor. 6 armor, actually. 6 armor and 6 HP regen over time, which is pretty solid. So, personally, increases my physical survivability a lot. Grabbing a pipe or working towards a pipe wouldn't, be, wouldn't be bad either because of the radiance. If you drop the pipe, uh, what's it called, the barrier? If you call, put the pipe barrier on your team... You will take that burn damage. I mean, Radiance Burn is like, what, 50 damage per second right now or something? 60, 50 damage per second. So that means, what, like, 8 ticks of damage, basically? So over 8 ticks of damage, which is basically how long uh, the Radiance will be on your team during the Spectre ulti, then um, it will actually save your team a lot of HP. So, Barrier is pretty good against this. I wanted to really guarantee that we got the tower, so now I'm going to team uh, TP back and we're going to team fight. We're a little late, but this still could be okay. Kind of looking for ice bath opportunities here. Oh yeah, peel cream from the back. I forgot about this. That was really good. I put the veil on here on most of the heroes, I believe. It's a nice puck initiation. This delayed my my fight. We were able to get the specter with it though. DK is gonna die to wards. I really can't go back in the fight, unfortunately. Looks like we lost a lot of the kills. The cleanup probably should have gone a bit better, and unfortunately did not. I wish I was paying more attention to what he said, though. He's told us that he was going to come from the backside, so we basically should have initiated a bit earlier. We still were able to, we'll, we're, we were able to kill the Witch Doctor immediately, so it still worked out okay. And we also got the Spectre, but again, we actually lost the Rex, we lost the Range Barracks, which isn't that bad, but it's still a Barracks disadvantage versus a Nature's Prophet, which is really not good. So, things not going the best for us. I think my Veil is solid, though. I got almost all of them, and it definitely helped with the Macro Pyre and the Ice Path on the Spectre. I kind of lucked out in his hitting Spectre, though. I just kind of, like, saw a lot of stuff, so I did another Zoni and Ice Path and actually caught him. So it worked out, and I got my Dual Breath on him, too. So we're trying to... Uh, Rush up the middle to see if we can try to take a Rax off of this. So that's why I'm smoking the two support heroes to get here a bit faster. PL has his heart finished, so he's got a lot more survivability now. We also knew the puck was over here. Fortunately, we were unable to catch him. If we could have roared him right there and gotten that kill, we could have actually taken a Rax, I think. Although the downside is that um, the bot lane is constantly pushing in, and they have a Nature's Prophet, and he has a Necro 3, so if we actually leave the base, there's a lot of threat of us uh, getting caught. Of losing, losing more attack. than we were bargaining for. So we have no wards up right now, so we need to get some up. I'm sorry, they're, they're actually out of, sh out of... They've been sold out, so... Rubik has them. He's actually jungling right now. I think he should have used this time to, instead of jungling to go put wards up. Like, him taking another camp is not really that important. Him putting his observer wards up is really important, because we need to see where their team, their team is. I had to mech the Rubik there. I didn't have to mech him, I guess, but I did mech him. This fight, this is kind of weird. I really wanted to fight this personally. I thought this was okay for us. This fight ended up completely being our downfall, in my opinion. 
So that was just a huge communication issue. They went on the Nature's Prophet top, but he's really tanky, so he took forever to die. And then as soon as I think he escaped, because I don't think he died. Yeah, as soon as he, as soon as the um, Prophet escaped, DK TP'd out, DK being the Beastmaster. But technically we could have fought that, because we had four out of five of our heroes there. I honestly think we could have fought that. We had 4 out of 5, but since DK had already left, then it became like a, a 3v3 or a 3v4, which is not something you want to fight, and it just like completely dicked up the team fight. Everything just sucked at that point. So again, I veiled this, just trying to like slow down the push. I thought I cancelled that Ice Path, but I did not, apparently. I know we just gotta try to delay the game as long as possible. I did. I am reducing his attack speed using uh, liquid fire constantly. Looks like they took the middle barracks. I kind of wish I would veil this. I definitely need a bit more HP though. I'm missing way too much, so I'm just gonna pop in for a bit of regen and then we'll come back out with the fight. Fortunately, I threw that like right before I saw the witch doctor ulti. Like just doing so much damage. I had to dual breath that as well, just to like get the damage up. But most of that damage that we were taking was from the Spectre taking damage and reflecting it out. So we still won the team fight, but we got triple racks, so not very good. You guys can live, just barely. Apparently, Puck was coming back for the kill. So basically our downfall this game was a couple of very small team fight errors. I should have been with the team a bit more rather than warding at some points. Or maybe our team should have waited until I warded before we went out ganking, something like that. I'm not sure which one's the correct answer. Um, and we definitely should have uh, not had that bad engagement at the top lane. That one was pretty bad. And we also probably shouldn't have lost that tier 2 bot tower fight where I engaged on 2. I think that opportunity was great, honestly. And um, if axes were thrown or anything, they might have all been on cooldown. Who, how do, what do I know? They might have used them all because of um, the counter creep wave. Maybe they were all on cooldown, so maybe that's why the fight didn't happen. But um, just like three small team fight, team fight errors meant that our PL's lead, which previously, yeah, he does have the highest net worth. He did outfarm the Spectre because we did a lot better ganking early game than they did. So um, we had a pretty big advantage in terms of our hard carry, but they also had a Nature's Prophet and they were able to win a couple more team fights than us. So. That's going to result in us getting mega creeped, and at this point, it's very, very difficult to win, especially when they actually still do have very good farm. It's basically PL trying to fight against like three heroes that are extremely, extremely farmed, and it's just going to be very difficult. I don't really regret my four staff pickup that much, honestly. Uh, maybe you could argue I should have gotten a blink dagger or something, but I think it was fine. I, I should have landed more ice pass as well, so you could also um, criticize those mistakes that I made. I've definitely missed a lot of ice paths. Land that ice path though, guys. So good. Liquid Fire is really good for counter pushing too. The problem is that their creeps do like 100 damage a hit, so it doesn't really matter how it, how slow they attack, because like every attack is just like so much. So now we just hit creeps until the end of the game, basically. Oh, you guys might be confused why I never ma upgraded my magic wand. Mostly because you don't need to that much as a Jakiro because, his, again, his HP is very good. I didn't really feel like it was needed as much. In most circumstances, I'll, I'll level it up, especially if I'm a squishy hero, because you genuinely need the extra 60 HP. But for Jakiro, I just wanted to get a mech. So because I was getting a mech, I said, rather than spending... 350 gold getting a magic wand I could just leave it on a magic stick and I could spend that 350 to get a bit closer towards a um, to get it a bit closer towards my mech 300 gold is a lot when you're talking about getting your mech out at the right time so it does make a big a big uh, difference has this been up this whole time or did I have it open okay I apparently had this open while I was open. I didn't realize I, I found out now but I did not realize that you could actually see the mech or the uh, Lincolns on somebody You're frozen. Still gonna die to the burning though. Oh. 
So at that point, the game is definitely over, and we're going to lose it. So a couple small team fight errors are what we made, and that resulted in us losing a game that we had a we had an okay advantage in the early game. So refining all of these skills makes you a much better Dota player, though. And by skills, I mean things like knowing when to not team fight because they're bad ideas, because they could produce losses of fights. Because if you do lose those fights, and they get the advantage back, and then that prevents you from pushing and gives you a slightly worse chance of winning a team fight. Just like all those things add up a lot. And this game was was very much a, a game lost by small mistakes. I think so. The game was very, very close and it was definitely a game by uh, of small mistakes. So, all right, I think that's it for the game. I hope you guys learned a lot and I will see you later. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, hopefully we get some Halloween events pretty soon. Um, maybe like a day or two. I'm, I'm sure there will be one. There was a post that uh, Cyborg Matt made that showed all of these like little strings and things that were added to the client that are going to that uh, encourage the thought of there being a game mode or something. It hasn't been released yet as of my recording, but hopefully soon, and I'll make lots of videos of it when it comes out and tell you guys about it. So thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.